You know, we talked the other night, unbelievable game, environment, atmosphere, uh, the heart of the guys to play like they did, scary ending. Uh, glad we're glad we're teaching lessons uh, based, you know, off, uh, after a win, even a close win and an ugly win at times, but um, but still a win. And that's those are hard to come by as you watch college ball and professional ball, especially the longer the season goes and tendencies and attrition and injuries set in. I uh, feel very fortunate to have come away with a win. I felt like we missed a couple opportunities to to put that game away uh, in the second half where we had a couple really good chances, uh, some self-inflicted wounds. You got to give them credit. The way they stormed back late shows uh, you know a team that that has found a way to – to battle, uh, similar to what we've done, and, and it, it became it became very tense down the stretch. So uh, we're fortunate of some maybe some miscommunication on their end and a missed field goal, but it's still a win, and and we'll we'll do everything we can to learn from it and, and hopefully make some some better plays down the fourth quarter uh, in the future if if similar circumstances arise. I think it's a first time we've really been the team being chased. We've been chasing all along up to this point. Not sure we handled it really, really well. It'd be great learning op- learning opportunity for us, and, and and hopefully if we end up in this situation again down the stretch, which is likely the way all these games are going, that we'll be in this situation again. We'll do better. We'll play better. Um, but uh, but proud that this group has found a way to fight to be five and two and and relevant and um, and improving. And we've got a we've got a home game against Hawaii, another big game, conference game, and we're going to have to improve and play better this week. And, and that's really what we're going to put our focus on. What questions do you have? Hey, Coach Al from the radio station, Logan. Uh, two parts. Number one is I know that special teams are a smaller part of the percentage of plays in the game. So how much time do you spend on that? Because my second question is this weekend, special teams in all games showed up so big, and especially in the state of Utah, and in your game, two in particular, the longer uh, onside kick and then their missed field goal at the end. I mean, that decides the game, those two plays in some ways when you look back at the game. Yeah, we uh, we we spend a ton of time. Uh, we, we feel like it, it uh, deserves just the same amount of attention as offense and defense. Uh, I think Coach Nick Premsky and Bobby Dodd and, and really the staff, because we all coach it, uh, I think everybody puts a tremendous amount of time and energy into it. We all respect that it's it's got a chance to impact every game, especially close games and games that you might be physically a little bit outmatched in some areas. And we knew size and power was going to be a concern all day. The good thing about special teams is you play it out in space, and that's where speed and quickness tend to play a big factor, and it did. We were able to get to the ball that was on the ground. We were a little bit quicker and a step better. We were able to cover kicks well. Uh, we set up, you know, a big kick return. So a lot of good things. And obviously Connor stepping up and really kind of getting back to what we all expected he was capable of doing in, in kicking field goals. So um, we believe in it. I believe in it. We have starters on those units in every phase. And, and we take a tremendous amount of pride. And, and I felt like before the season started, it was an area that could impact games for us in maybe ways that um, – that we weren't quite ready to impact in on offense and defense. And luckily we're getting some big impactful plays in those other areas, but we are, these kids do take a lot of pride in how we play on special teams and it showed up big in this one. Coach Anderson, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. Uh, you guys have won the turnover battle the last two games. Uh, and it, that was an area you struggled against both Boise and BYU. So how encouraging has that been? That's uh, big. I mean, turnovers, and explosive plays, that's the formula for winning games. If you win those two margins, you're going to win games 90-plus percent of the time. If you look at the wins we have this year, those are areas that we affected the game positively. The two games we lost, we were bad in both those areas. And, and the numbers match up for the last 30 years that I've been coaching, to be honest with you. Uh, explosive play ratio and turnover ratio impact the outcome of the game, maybe more, really honestly more, or more consistently maybe than any other stats. And so we focus a lot on it. We've done well at times. We've done poor at times. And the last two weeks, we've done a better job, and you see the result. Hey, Coach, Shane Nielsen, Statesman. Um, it seems like the, the offense and the defense, they both have their moments. But the past few games, it's been a struggle to kind of have them both playing their best ball at the same time. Maybe how do you go about this week 
getting them to be a little bit more in sync? Uh, I'm not sure there's a formula for that. Some of it is the opponent. Some of it is just the ebb and flow of a game. Uh, good calls, bad calls, everything in between. We just go back to work, focus on this game, detail it and, and dissect it and coach very diff- – and honestly, very deliberate – coaching on how we can improve, and then we go out to work and, and try to do that this week. I think you're seeing steady improvement, but we still have a lot of work to do. So I, I don't – there's no there's no formula that, that guarantees you're going to get everybody moving in the same direction at the same time. You just have to go to work every day and hope that it clicks on Saturday. Uh, some 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 weeks are better and easier than others. Some matchups are better and, and more favorable than others. But finding a way to win, there's a skill. That's a skill as well, and and that's the, t- the thing this team has found a way to do. Coach RJ Salvison, uh, what was really impressive, and I think you mentioned as well in the post game, was that you guys matched the physicality both defensively and offensively. Can you just talk about how proud of your team for doing that? Because that's a really physical football team in Colorado State. Yeah, you know, it, it, they are definitely right there at the top of, of what we've seen this year in terms of their fronts. Uh, how big they are. I mean, I think their whole defense front, all seniors played a lot of ball. And clearly we didn't handle them well all night, but we we were able to go toe-to-toe with them. Uh, we're not built as big uh, on either front. We were quicker, we were faster, and I think we used that and really just a tremendous amount of effort and will to, to battle a team that's built physically really, really well. So uh, proud of our guys accepting the challenge. I told them early in the week, it was going to be a heavyweight bout, two big dudes swinging and punching each other in the mouth for 60 minutes. That's exactly what it ended up being. That's not a fun environment to be in, to be truthful. Uh, this is a violent game and a physical game, and we've had a lot of physical games on top of each other. Uh, so beyond proud of how our guys handled themselves in, in those areas, and it gave us a chance to let our speed and quickness win out in space because we were able to play a physical game up front. And, and when we needed to, and really set the tempo of the game to some degree. My next question kind of goes along with that, though. You gave up a lot of sacks, and your evaluation, was that the quarterback? Was that the offensive line? Obviously, Colorado State's good there. What do you think going forward in those areas? All, all, all the above. All the above. There were, there were times that we just really got exposed in some one-on-one matchups that they made plays and got to us. There were times schematically where we didn't communicate well and we turned some things loose that we shouldn't have. Uh, There were a couple that that Logan should have slid and got rid of the ball and he didn't, trying to wait on a play to develop. Uh, Honestly, there was – there's every one of those areas was an issue at some point during the night. It wasn't just one thing or the other. And they're they're good at what they do. They're top ten in the country on defense for a reason. It showed. uh, We we struggled. uh, But – Again, you go back and even beyond the struggles, we found ways to move the ball and, and get the ball in the end zone a few times enough to win a game against really good defense. Coach Anderson, um, their defense is – I don't know, it's hard to access them because they have some really good players, Bethley, Davis, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to slaughter his name, so I'm not even – Good luck because I don't know how to say them either. <laughs> he was first team on conference last year. So, but they give up a lot of yards, but they force a ton of turnovers. So, how how would you assess their defense? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I, I think to me in in today's football, yards are uh, an illusion. Uh, with the amount of plays that everybody gets, the amount of tempo, yards are an illusion. Turnovers and forcing kicks are what wins games. And that's the key. And you just mentioned they create a lot of turnovers. And that, that's a, that, that, to me, is the definition of a great defense. Uh, if you can you know, bend but don't break, create the turnovers and enforce the kick, then you're going to win a lot of games. And that's what we focus on. I, I just don't think yards are – it's not uh, consistent across leagues and against team versus team versus team because you got one team that gets 90 plays and you got another team that gets 50 plays – and that style of play was going to dictate a lot of yards uh, or, or the lack thereof. Uh, you you got to look at can you force turnovers and can you force kicks? That, to me, is the, is the definition of a great defense. What we strive to be, and that's what the teams that we come up against, they, if they're good at those things, you know it's going to be a long day. Individuals, Coach. 
coach on defense. So are really good. They're back as deep as the secondary. It looks like they could be about as active as any that you played in some ways. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. They, uh, Quickness, speed, length, no doubt. Uh, it's a it, huge challenge in that area. I mean, I think every every week you see strengths and weaknesses of, of, of the groups you're going to play. So you have to kind of uh, stay within what you do, but also understand where where are going to be our biggest mismatches that are, are, are going to – we're going to have to try to avoid where are going to be our few matchups that are in our favor – and so in that sense, that's the the chess match inside the game. Uh, yeah, this is going to be more, I think, two more teams that look a lot more like each other, whereas we've been up against really big, big, physical, long, uh, kind of hitch-in-the-mouth style football teams over the past month. Uh, I think we're looking probably more towards guys that look a little bit more like us in the future, or at least I hope we are. Coach, can I ask you about the status on Calvin Tyler Jr. and then also, were there any impactful injuries from uh, from the Colorado State game? I'll work backwards. Nothing in this particular game that would be season-ending or honestly at this point would we would think would cost anybody the next game. Uh, Calvin Tyler uh, broke a bone in his hand in, in uh, the last game he played in, uh, had surgery this last week and is expected to be back in a week or so. Uh, that surgery should stabilize the area, and he's going to probably be able to pad it up and cast it up, but but uh, didn't, didn't knew he wouldn't play this week, and everything from this point forward will be kind of uh, – will be day-to-day, and, and as the doctors think, you know, it's ready and stable enough to start playing. It could be this week. I would expect it probably more a week from now, but uh, but he, he says he's ready, so we'll just kind of see how he does on a daily basis. Coach, uh, we, uh, we've got to ask you about Calvin uh, Calvin Turner Jr. for them. He does everything for them. He did everything for them last year, too. Uh, what, uh, I guess, uh, what do you see from him that just makes him maybe the most well-rounded, dynamic player you play this season, arguably? Uh, yeah, I think he's definitely in that conversation. I think that's the answer, though, his versatility. Uh, home, run, home run speed, uh, a ton of different things that he can do, bring to the table. You know, we've seen power, power, power. Now we're going to see a guy that's really, really good in space. And you miss a tackle, he's got a chance to score on you. So it's just a different animal, but he is without a doubt in the conversation for um, most versatile, uh, diverse kind of uh, threat, I think, that maybe we've seen uh, most of the season, if not all season. Coach, they just played New Mexico State in a back. They played him home and home. How would you like to do that during a season? And in other ways, though, you're looking at your next two opponents in the, in the game. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, yeah, I'm not real fired about the, that as a, as a scheduling option. But yeah, we're seeing we're seeing the next two opponents in 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 one game. So it it is what it is. Um, we got to take them one at a time. That's the focus for us. That's a huge focus. Each hurdle as it comes to us. Luckily, we get to play them here at home. They got to travel to us. And I'm sure that's not a trip they they look forward to taking. So if, if there's an advantage, I love the fact that it's in our favor. But uh, they're well coached, and and I know they they they're in a position where it's kind of playoffs for them. Uh, I've been there before, where you just can't afford to to let another conference game slip. So you're going to get their best effort, and it's kind of winner go home playoff type mentality for them. I'm sure. Coach Graham was very complimentary about you. He seems to kind of know you, or you guys have had some battles before can you talk about that yeah you know I was at Southern Miss when he was at Tulsa and we had some uh, we had some track meets and some really really fun competitive games and we got the best of him he got the best of us we've we've really kind of offensively watched a lot of crossover film all these years thought they've always been really creative but uh, you, you have a look at his career and, and how he just rose up the ranks and ended up at the power five level uh, with a really very physical, competitive football team, you got to have a lot of respect for that. We've talked at conference meetings about some of those old games. Uh, I want to say we had one that was, you know, fifty-eight to fifty-four kind of track meet, and we had a low-scoring uh, run or two uh, where where defense has played a big part. It'd be interesting to see how this one turns out. 
Coach Anderson, uh, this is a different feel of a Hawaii offense than we're, we're used to seeing in, in that they run the ball a lot. They've been very successful on the ground. I mean, they've always been able to mix it up a little bit, but it's a big part of their offense. So uh, how challenging is it the game plan for these guys up there for their offense? Well, I, I think that's uh, the nature of a Todd Graham football team. You know, I think the – and, again, I haven't played – Hawaii. You guys have seen them more than I have. I just know over the years of watching them when they were a lot more of a kind of a run and shoot spread sling it team, Todd Graham's going to run the ball. He's going he's gonna to have a defense that's built around stopping the run. That's what he did his entire career from a high school coach to now. So that doesn't surprise me. The weapons that he has is what is a quarterback that's versatile, can run and throw, maybe one of the most diverse, you know, well-rounded, utilized um, hybrid players in, in football. So it's it's those weapons that, that creates the problem and the fact that they are committed to running the ball well. <coughs> Excuse me. Coach, you've talked a lot about DT this season just because of the impact he's had, but can you speak a little bit on 100 or five of the last six games, he's had 100 plus receiving yards and he's third in the nation in receptions. And just what does he do? And then the focus the defense has to put on him, what does that do for everybody else? Well, you saw it for Derek Wright. It put him in a single almost all day long, and he he worked him over and had two huge touchdown catches uh, because he was able to get singled up. We've seen that for, for other guys. They spent a lot of time trying to make sure they doubled um, DT all day. That's hard to do because we move him around so much and he plays all five spots for us. Uh, but the thing that – that makes him great is his work ethic. The guy is the hardest worker on the field every day at practice. He was all off season. He was all summer. And, and to me, that's what you're seeing on the field. They can take him away at times, but we're perfectly fine throwing the ball to everybody on the field. And I do give coach Tuck and coach Cephalo a tremendous amount of credit for being uh, creative in ways to still keep him involved. Even though we know going in, he's going to be leveraged and bracketed and somebody over the top of him. Uh, but they've done a phenomenal job of getting him space, and and, and Logan uh, has been able to get him the ball. So I, I think everybody's doing a phenomenal job of breaking tendencies and being creative, and then the other guys out there are taking advantage of opportunities that they're given, which makes it clear you better guard the entire field. Don't know everybody's listening, but man, message out to Matt Wells and Jen Wells, lifting those guys up. Love them to death. Hate this business at time, but anybody's listening, man, be praying for those folks. It's a brutal business at time. He's a great dude and a great ball coach, and I hate what they're going through. So that's my two cents worth anyway. By the way, we need a bunch of people here on Saturday at 1 o'clock rocking this place out. If anybody's listening, another great one. Hey, standing room only would be awesome. Standing room only would be awesome. Where else would you want to be at 1 o'clock on Saturday in Cash Valley than right here helping us beat Hawaii? Thanks, guys. Tony Al Lewis from KBNU in Logan, Utah. Are, are you playing a different position than you thought you'd play? I mean, obviously you came here. I think you were a receiver maybe at the start. But, I mean, can you talk a little bit about what you've done on defense and, and the spot you've kind of got into now? Yeah, so I came in as a, a freshman as a receiver. I uh, played a little bit at receiver. And then, like, I, even my freshman year, I played, like, for uh, uh, Air Force game, I played at safety a little bit. So, it was always a can he, can he play defense, can he play receiver type deal. And then I made a lot of plays on uh, special teams for kickoff. So, they was like, we should try this dude out on, uh, on defense. And then I ended up playing safety, played a few snaps at, snap, at safety, and then they moved me to striker. And uh, it's been a good move so far. I like it. Uh, it's fun. Uh, Johnny, uh, you guys uh, entered the bye week having struggled in the turnover margin against Boise and BYU. So how good does it feel to, to do your part to help uh, you guys get on the plus side of that turnover margin the last couple of games? Uh, well, it started up front when uh, when the guys up front spin the trading and uh, making the QB, make a decision fast. And then you got guys like our corners and the guys playing down below me when I'm in the post. When they do their job, it's hard for the uh, the QB to make a good throw. So I'm just back there, you know, just picking off from what my teammates do.
Johnny, <clears throat> excuse me, Jake Nielsen, Utah State Smith, um, talk to me a little bit of, about that striker position and how does it differ just from like a a traditional defensive role? Uh, so the striker position is fun because sometimes I'm out man on the slide or, or tight end and sometimes I'm in the box. So like for a safety, they have to be, they on like the second level. So, you know, they, they, they got to wait for their times if they ain't blitzing or something like that. See me, I can play both. I can play the pass and the run and, and in the same spot. So, I mean, I like playing the striker position. It's, a, it's pretty diverse for me. What is it about that spot where it seems like every play you make is very noticeable in, in a game compared to guys making other tackles all over the field? What, what is it about that spot that seems to isolate you into making some really key plays? Uh, well, I don't know. It's just, I guess it's just a honey hole. Uh, I, I guess it's just a spot where for a play for guys to make plays. The striker position is, is a spot for you to make a lot of plays uh, in a pass game and in a run game. So that's why I like that position. around the program, Johnny, what are you feeling now about where things are going along with this team and how well you've been able to win close games, uh, fun games? Uh, this has got to be a lot different feeling than what you had to go through last year. So can you talk about that? Uh, it's definitely a, a different feeling, a better feeling than it was last year. Last year was rough. But this year, I mean, the coaching staff is doing a good job. With, with getting us in the right positions to make plays and our our guys is just playing hard and uh they just we wanna win. So I mean we play hard to the to the to the clock say zero zero. So that's 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 a good thing this year. Johnny, you're playing a team uh, that Coach Anderson was just saying is a has a lot of similarities to to this Utah State team. Uh it's more of a get out in space and, and use use their speed type team. Uh, how, how much are you looking forward to this matchup and kind of getting a break from the the physical smash mouth type teams that you've been playing? Uh, I mean it's it's fun to play guys that want to throw the ball and uh, test us out test us out on the outsides. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we're gonna play hard no matter if they want to run it or throw it. Uh, be excited. We're gonna get get going on on, on them this week, uh, starting today. So, I'm excited for this matchup that's coming up. Well, Johnny, a few minutes ago, Coach Anderson he said, talking about defense, he said yards are an illusion, and the purpose, the goal for defenses in this day and age is to uh, create turnovers and uh, force kicks and punts and field goals. So, what are your thoughts on those comments? And would you agree with that philosophy? No, I definitely agree. When we get turnovers and put our offense in a good position to uh, score and, you know, get points on our end, it's, it's it's good for us. And stopping the touchdown and getting three points for a field goal is is good. So, I mean, as long as we're doing those things, causing turnovers on the uh, back end and, you know, making guys punt the ball and taking away the, the big plays and touchdowns, I mean, we'll, we'll do pretty good this year. Anything else for Johnny? Hey, I'll just ask you real quick. You're you're a Houston kid. You care about baseball at all? You following the Astros at all with the World Series? Oh yeah. So uh game one coming up. I'm excited. Uh hopefully we can win another World Series and uh, just add those to the trophies that we already got. Hey Logan, Jake Nelson, Utah State spin and how you feeling after Friday night? I mean, you played a good game, but you took a little bit of a beating out there. I feel great. Got the win. That's all that matters. I feel uh, really good to be 5-2 and two and going into the next week and try to be 1-0. Oh. Uh, Logan, Al Lewis from the radio station. And Logan, I asked the coach a few minutes ago about all the sacks. And he said you were, you know, he said everybody took the blame. Uh, when you look at film, what do you see about those things that maybe you can try to avoid some of those in the future when you look back at that game? Yeah, there's definitely some um, that are on me. Um, there's probably three of them. I could, I should get the ball out. Uh, we're in field goal range. Just can't take a sack there. Um, got.
throw the ball away. Um, the one to John, um, I just got to throw it away, even if he's falling down. Uh, can't take a sack there. So I got to do a lot better in that aspect. Um, we've done a pretty good job all season um, to try to stay out of those. But um, they're a good team. They're good up front. And uh, we knew we were going to have a battle on our hands. And they made some plays. But I can definitely help out the team by uh, throwing the ball away and uh, being smarter in that aspect. Um, but I'm just happy that we uh, overcame it and got the dub. And we kind of talked to you about this before, but uh, you played for Coach Anderson, uh, you know, so Tucker was around the system, but, but I mean, he's not really, you know, is, is this a different kind of offense than you really played at Arkansas State, or how has that modified or changed some? Yeah, it's different in some ways. Um, there's a lot more freedom in this offense. Um, a lot of a lot of the guys have more freedom and options um, in certain aspects. So I think it's it's similar. Um, some of the things are similar, like run games and protections, and then a lot of things are different. So um, it's still – I mean, we, we, we change our stuff a lot. Um, so it's still learning every day. We, we learn every day, and, um, and we're trying to get better every day. So I think it's, it's similar in some aspects, but not, um, some aspects it's completely different. Logan, uh, I think this is a really intriguing matchup you guys going up against their secondary, they've given up some big plays, but they've also made a lot of big plays. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I don't know how, 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 how much are you looking forward to this matchup against their secondary? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to just to play them in general. Um, I think they're a great team. They fly around. They're really disciplined. Um, they make some plays, like you said, um, watching the tape. I think they have really good ball skills in the back end. And I think they, they play, they play really hard. So I'm really excited for our guys to go against them. And I think it's gonna be a really good challenge. Can you give us a little more about the DT, Tompkins, how he is? It just seems like all the time he's coming up with plays. And, I mean, you know, maybe he'd give you all the credit. What, how much do you give to him, or what do you think about what he's doing? Oh, I give him all the credit. He's the one catching the ball and running fast. I'm just trying to doing my job to get the ball to him. Um, he does a great job. Um, obviously, you can see how talented he is, and his speed and quickness is unlike a lot of people in college football. So um, I'm happy he's on my team. Um, he's a great, great person, great person to be around, a great teammate, and he works really hard. So I, it's all his, he does all the work. Um, I just try to get him the ball. Um, but as when we're working together, O-line's working good, RBs are working good, and he's, and he gets the ball in his hands, he's electric. And I think that him being so good, he uh, gives opportunities to other guys on the field, like you saw uh, Friday night again for uh, Derek Wright. I mean, they were doubling DT a lot, um, um, the most of the game. And so that gave opportunities to other guys to make plays. And I think it helps our football team tremendously when he's playing well. Um, and he's a, he's a great person to be around. And it just overall helps our team in, in every aspect of the game. Logan, what is it about you guys on fourth down? Just you've been incredibly efficient this season in that situation. Yeah, um, it's, Coach A has been like that since I met him. Um, he's going to be aggressive and calculated. Um, we know in certain parts of the field that we're gonna we have two downs when it's we're in the middle of the field and we get it close to fourth and one or fourth and two we know we're probably gonna go for it um, and we have talk, we talked about that every week and we're really just confident um, we're confident in the game plan we're confident in the plays we get called uh, they get called and we don't panic we just execute it's just another play um, if you don't get it we trust our defense and our defense trusts us so um, and I know it's huge when we do get it and I think that it's a sometimes it's a backbreaker backbreaker for other defenses so we just try to stay calm and execute and, and do our job and and most of the time it uh it works out pretty well if we do that logan uh just how good can this team be when all three units put everything together i mean you have you have moments both offensively and defensively against uh colorado state and obviously special teams were, were huge so mm -hmm. uh just how good can this team be when everything comes together uh, this team can. The sky's the limit. I mean, we can we can compete with anybody um, in the country when we play our our best ball. Um, I know sometimes I'm to blame for that. I gotta take care of the ball better. Um, we've uh, been uh, have some miscommunications during the year, and then um, I've made some really poor decisions. Um, and I can't be doing that, putting our defense in a bad spot. Um, but if I just start taking care of the ball better, and we start fundamentally fundamentally doing our job. Uh, I think it'll work out really well. I think when we play our best on all three phases, um, we'll be really, really hard to beat. What's your favorite part, Logan, of being a quarterback? What do you like the best? Is it the preparation? Is it 
watching the play, reading it, knowing what's going on? What, what, what can you get into there? Uh, obviously, I love the preparation. Um, I've been doing this a while. Um, it's a lot of work. It's hours and hours of work every day before before you even step on the field on Fridays or Saturdays. And it's it's with the guys and the, and the team building and, and the guys. But at the end of the day, I like, I like the ball in my hand. I like to give our chance the best, our team the best chance to win. Um, I like knowing that if I do my job to my best of my ability, we can we can win games. And uh, and these guys work so hard. I mean, I don't want to let anybody down. These coaches work their tails off to get us in the right positions. And I think that if I just do my job, I work as hard as I can. I give us the best chance to win the games in some aspects. And and that's what I love. I love when we can execute as a team and and work together. I think that it's it's really uh, it shows on our our faces after we win how how special it is because we we work so hard. Everybody works so hard in this building, from the coaches to everybody, the janitors that clean our our stuff uh, up. I mean, they work so hard late before we uh, before we even get here. It's just from it's from them to us. I mean, it's it's everybody in this building is working so hard, and I think it it, uh, it really matters to everybody. That's the that's the best part. And then you give me an idea of preparation. Like yesterday, you probably wanted to look at your game. You played against Colorado State, but then you also start to want to. Look, did you start to look at Hawaii stuff more than probably anybody else yesterday because you're the quarterback or whatever? Uh, I watched the Colorado State game after the game. Uh, I was at home watching it, um, probably like till two in the morning, um, and then I started watching Hawaii um, Saturday afternoon. Um, took a little break, spent some time with my family, and then I uh, started watching it while I was watching games, uh, watching Hawaii and wa- going through some games and cut ups with them. Um, like I said, they're a really good team. Uh, we we got to play our best ball to win. This conference is is really special. Um, it's one of the reasons why I came here. It's one of the most dominant conferences in G five. Um, and I've always thought that, and I think that every team you play is going to be has a chance to beat you if you don't play your best. And we have a chance to win every game if we play our best. So I think that it's really a challenge um, for our team to come here and play the best because they're a really good football team. So I started watching them Saturday, and um, I'm really excited to play them. And you just mentioned family. Seems like I've seen your dad with some sweet before games. Has he been to almost every game, or has he been to every game, and will he be to every game? Is that kind of his plan? Yeah, so I don't. I live 26 hours away, so I don't come home a lot. Um, but they save up money, and they, they go to every game. They fly to every game, home or away. Um, he loves it. He's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a Twitter star. Uh, he loves the, the Twitter and, and social media and interacting with fans, and he loves it. You'll see him out here tailgating and stuff like that. So um, my dad's the biggest Aggie fan in the country. So um, I love him, and he's, he's doing, he's doing a, a great job of just – being supportive and, and so is my mom and my sister um they're always they love to be around here and they love this place um Logan Utah is pretty special Logan you mentioned how um the Mountain West and its quality of play is part of the reason why you came out here mm-hmm. you played enough games this season what are some of the nuances between the Mountain West and the Sun Belt and yeah you know, like the differences in competition and everything yeah I mean every game you got well first of all you got you got to teams that are on the verge of top 25 we got three or four teams that are, are in the mix every every week um to be ranked and um that's just never really happened at um in the Sun Belt um we have some really good teams in Sun Belt but um this 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 whole conference is so physical um and the quality of play I mean obviously you see every year you have numerous people get drafted first three or four rounds and um in this conference because it's the high quality of players that are in it um so I think that it it was no, known for me when since I was a freshman when we played up here um, in 2016 um, we lost, um, but I was like wow this this conference is special um, and this and this place is special. So uh, I, I've always noticed. I've always um, when I had the opportunity to come here, I was like no brainer. Anything else for Logan? You like being Logan Bonner in Logan, Utah? Is that a good spot for you to end up? I love it. Love being here. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. <laughs>